Oh, well, the boy's kind of small. George Shrinks. Oh, but it doesn't show at all. George Shrinks. Because he's always acting tall. George Shrinks. Oh, George Shrinks, George Shrinks, he's called. Oh, if a problem should be found. George Shrinks. Oh, he's the boy to have around. George Shrinks. Oh, something big or something small. George Shrinks. Oh, George Shrinks, George Shrinks, he's called. George Shrinks seems to find a way to make his dream. Day. His brother Junior does a call. George Shrinks. Well, Dad, blows a bugle call. George Shrinks. And Mama keeps an eye on. George Shrinks. 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 best thing about Bluster's Claw Cluster cereal is that even though they are 100% naturally nothing but good for you, Penelope's Pea Pinch, there's still a surprise in every box. Yes! That's a full set. Oh, sorry, buddy. Just hold on and I'll go get the milk truck. But the best thing about Bluster's Claw Clusters is that Mr. Bluster invented them right here in our town. And today, the whole town is getting together to clean his clock. Thank you all for helping with the restoration of the old town hall in time for our centennial birthday celebration next month. The town hall was built the very day our village was declared a town. Now that she's 100 years old, I'd say the old girl needs some sprucing up. All right. Before we start, I have a special announcement. We're not only fixing up Town Hall, but the magnificent clock donated and designed by our favorite founding father, William B. Bluster, is finally going to get fixed. Oh, this is too good to be true. Oh, oh, oh. Has that old clock ever worked? Not in about a hundred years, Georgie boy. The day they unveiled it, the clock stopped ticking, and it hasn't talked again since. It's supposed to be hexed. Harold? Hexed? Well, why else couldn't they get it working in the last hundred years? It is my great honor to introduce, straight from the belfries of Bannockburn, World-renowned clock repairman, Mr. Martin McDing. <laughs> if he can't get the clockworks working, no one can. So, without further ado, let's clean up town hall. <laughs> I'll be inside looking over color schemes. Well, if Mr. McDing is going to get the clock ticking, someone's got to get the chime singing. Come on, Junior. I'm going to need my trusty tool belt for this gig. Come on, Becky. Let's find a job before all the good ones are taken. Way ahead of you, George. All right, Dirt. Prepare for a brush with greatness. Ah. Whoops! Oh, sorry, George. I didn't see you. Be careful not to get underfoot. Underfoot? I'm practically underground. We could use uh, some window washers. What do you say, George? <laughs> you look like you could use some washing yourself. Hang on a second! Now, what were you saying? <laughs> well, certainly traditional. Time, Daddy? You're right, Junior. If this little clock were working, it'd tell us the time. The hands point to numbers, and the numbers tell the time. 
The little hand counts the hours. The big one is the minute hand. What do you think it counts? Whoa. That's right, minutes. And you know what minutes are made of? Just a second! 60 seconds, actually. But who's counting? Say, who is counting? I'm counting on you to leave the manual clock setting mechanisms where you found them. Manual clock setting mechanism. Oh, -ho, of course. See, Junior, this little clock sets the hands for the big clock. Don't worry, Mr. McDing. We'll just turn this back to 10 o'clock. Make way, window patrol coming through. What do you think, Dr. Shrinks? Is there anything we can do for the patient? Acute scuzzfestation and evidence of black goop. I have just the medicine. I need 20 cc's of squeegee. Stat. I'm on it. It's a full recovery. Nice work. There's plenty more where that came from. We could use some help in the library. Wow, they're even cleaning the Founders Library. Go ahead, Becky. I've got the window situation under control. Are you sure? I don't want to break up the team. Don't worry. The shrink somatic window cleaning system runs smooth as glass. Thanks, George. Hmm. Looks like the well has run... Whoa! Sorry about that. At least we know the sprinklers work. I'll head upstairs, see if anything else needs the shrink's touch. Penny pinch. <laughs> nice view you got up here. Uh, it's stuck. You could use a little cleaning too. Oh, no. uh, let me guess. No breaks? Yikes! Where'd you come from? Sorry, Mr. McDing. I, I didn't see you up here. That's all right. Clock repair is lonely work. It's nice to have some company. Man, is this tower ever cool? I'm guessing you mean you fancy this here old clock. I sure do. Uh, there's quite a story behind it, too. If you're interested. Is it about the hex? <laughs> well, let's see. It all started a few years before Billy B. Bluster ever put a toy in a box of cereal. Mr. Bluster began as an inventor and a clockmaker. He was very proud of his clocks and the characters he created. Penny Pincher, Hoity Toity, the high society reptile. The graceful Madame Tutu Lagrande. The Honorable Oswald Sonata and dear Emma Quack, all based on real-life folks, mind you. Unfortunately, Bluster's unique clock design went uh, underappreciated. But Mr. Bluster's clock cluster cereal was a runaway success, thanks to the free character he put in every box. Soon, Bluster was very wealthy. One day, the local bigwigs asked him to fund a new town hall, celebrating the promotion from village to certified town. Mr. Bluster agreed, as long as he could design the clock. But the town leaders figured if they didn't like the design, they'd replace it. But wily old Bluster built the clock so you couldn't get to the gears without taking apart the entire tower. That also meant the clock was impossible to fix without Mr. Bluster's special tools. Or at least the plans for his unique gear configuration. Until now. 
It takes an inventor to beat an inventor at his own game. I call him Chrono Robot. Whoa. What does he do? He finds and fixes whatever is keeping the clock from working. Oh, yeah, a little help from me. How will you know when it finds something? Watch. Ha, look at him go! What about the hex? Ha ha ha, bah. Silly superstition. Clocks are mechanics and science, son. A pendulum swings at a constant rate. A weight falls at a set speed. Hexes are for people who can't handle physics. Chrono's found something. Look! Aha! Your clock has a screw loose. Or a gear, anyway. Like I said, simple mechanics. Let's bring Chrono back and have a look. We'll have this clock fixed in a jiff. What happened? I don't know. We lost him. The hex. Hex or no hex, George. Without Chrono Robot, fixing a clock is impossible. What are we gonna do? Wow. George, look what I found. This must be one of Mr. Bluster's books. Can't you build another clock-fixing robot? Of course. I can have another chrono built in about uh, six months. Oh, six months. The centennial celebration will be long over by then. I guess we'll have to tear down the tower. Isn't there another way? They just don't build clocks like this anymore. You can say that again. I don't know what else to do. I'll call a crew to begin taking apart the tower. Wait, Mayor Wigglesworth. I have an idea. What is it, George? We don't need Chrono Robot when we have Chrono George. What? I'm the same size as Chrono, and I don't need controls. Mr. McDing can direct me with the radio phone, and I can fix a clock. Oh, I don't know. Come on. I can even do the robot. Well, as long as it's safe, I think it's a great idea. George is very resourceful. No sense you rooting around in that old clock unless I know what you're looking at. It's a very complicated design. Without the original plans, I'm afraid we're stopped cold. Becky, show them what you found. It looks like clock plans. So it does, Lassie. So it does. Well, what are we waiting for? Times are wasting. Headset, check. Tools, check. Retractable wire system, check. Okay. Chrono George to Clock Tower. Do you read me? Over. Clock Tower reads you, George. Clock Tower to Ground Control. Do you read me, Ground Control? Ground Control is ready. Well, good luck, George. Over. Clock Tower to Intelligence Center. Over. Intelligence Center reads you loud and clear. Be careful, dear. That's affirmative, Intelligence Center. Colonel George is ready to begin descent. Here goes nothing. Whoa! Aha. Uh -huh. Chrono has broken a trail. Beat, but can you dance to it? A hundred year old clock ought to have a groove and sound to match, right, Junior? Grooving, grooving. A few tweaks, and we'll have this place a rockin', uh, well, around the clock, <laughs> frankly. I see Chrono. Great, how does he look? He seems okay. I'm going in for a closer look. Are you okay, George? Uh, sure. <laughs> For a second, I thought there was somebody down here with 
me, but... It's just my old friend, Hoyt E. Toity. Mr. McDing, how did this clock break in the first place? That, George, is a great mystery. After the clock was finished, the townsfolk argued over the design. Some wanted the clock removed, the others wanted it to stay. When everyone went to bed, the clock was working. When they woke up the next day, the clock had mysteriously stopped. What stopped it? Mr. Bluster blamed the big wigs. He refused to fix it until they gave him a public apology. And the clock has been silent ever since. Target acquired. Where's the gear? Down there on the pendulum. Uh, how am I ever gonna reach that? First things first. One chrono robot coming up. Good work, George. Come on up, Chrono. And now the clutch gear. Now. That's a bit of a draft in here. This should hook me up. Got it! What's that? It's gone. What's gone? Clutch gear. I had it hooked, but as I pulled it up, it disappeared. The hex strikes again. Whoa, what's going on? Come back here! No hex is gonna hijack my life. Time for plan Z. Superboy, in pursuit. That's what I call surfing the web. Whoa. This is quite a collection. The question is who or what does it belong to? Come in, George. How's it going down there? Great. I found the light and the clutch gear. And a bunch of old tools. We're not the first ones to try to fix Mr. Bluster's clock. I get the feeling I'm not alone in here. George, what's down there with you? Ha, it's probably just the boogeyman. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, laddie. Come on up with that gear and we'll figure something else out. I'm here already. With your help, I'm sure I can finish up. Any idea where the up elevator is? That's my department. Can you get back to the top of the weight? Sure, no problem. Then climb the big gear to your left as far as it goes. Okay, now look right above you. There should be a link missing in the gear train. Gear train is missing a link, all right. Uh, I'm not so sure how I'm gonna get the clutch gear to float in midair. What goes up must come down. There. <gasps> What's that? Ooh, ooh. Where is the gear? The hex. It, it disappeared out of thin air. Hmm. Rustling noises. Cold blast of air. Disappeared out of thin air in the pitch dark. That sounds suspiciously like. Clusters, boogeyman clusters. Myotis lucificus. Oh, of course. We got bats in our belfry. Meet the hex. Poor guy. <laughs> Thought that gear flying through his house was bad food. George to Central Intelligence, over. Come in, George. I need something tasty, all natural, and kind of small. I know. Mom, can I please have a box of Mr. Bluster's clock clusters? Getting hungry in there? <laughs> Someone is. Pardon me, Mayor Wigglesworth. If 
Is it possible to get a box of clock clusters? Clock clusters on the way? But isn't it a little late for breakfast? Well, what do you say, X? Wanna trade? 100% all natural. Better than a tough old clock gear. I'll even let you keep the toy. Aha! Clutch gear is in. I'm coming out. We're sending down a line. Hook on and we'll bring you up. Then there's the sticky matter of this web. I hate to ruin all the little guy's hard work. Hello, Mr. Longlegs. Mind if I hitch a ride? <laughs> Thanks for the lift. One last thing. What's taking the boy so long? I'll have to send Chrono in there looking for him if he doesn't show up soon. Don't worry, Mr. McDing. George knows what he's doing. Okay, I'm set. Haul away. Finally. What did you do, George? Eat that whole box of clock clusters by yourself? It feels like you weigh 50 pounds. Well, if it isn't old hoity toity in the flesh. <laughs> I mean, the cast iron. But then, where is George? Looking for me? Yeehaw! There's George! Hiya, Georgie! Oh, he certainly knows how to make a big entrance. Ah, looks like you've taken a shine to the chimes, my boy. <laughs> Hooray! Hear that, Junior? Yeah! The music biz is all about the fans. Think they're going crazy now? <laughs> Just wait till I hear the groovy bell start ringing. Groovy, groovy. Boy, I miss those guys already. I know what you mean. Well, let's get this clock ticking and bring them back for an encore. Okay. okay. This has been a great day for the entire Town. Thanks to everyone's hard work, the cleanup of our town hall is a sweeping success. I'd also like to thank Mr. McDing, Becky, and the Shrinks family for their help getting a piece of local history geared up for our 100th birthday. Yeah. Lastly, I would like to thank George whose big heart and perfect size made fixing the old clock possible. George! I couldn't have done it without my team. I wonder what Mr. Bluster and the bigwigs would say if they knew what really happened to the clock. What do you think, Hex? I wouldn't be surprised if the mysterious clock stopper was your great great granddad. <laughs> it's almost time. Are you ready, George? Start the clock. Time waits for no George. Ready, Junior? They're going to be playing our song. Bong, bong. You got it, little buddy. Now, huh? Listen to this. Look at them, Junior. Doesn't that just ring your bell? Hey, I may want to shorten the refrain. Ah, all in due time, my boy. All in due time. So. I got to start the clock, but I couldn't have done it without my crack team of clock repairmen. 
Everyone was an important part of the operation, just like every single cog and gear was needed to get old Mr. Bluster's clock working again. Together, we did it. And I even made a new friend in the process. You know, sometimes life is just like Bluster's Clock Cluster cereal. There's a surprise in every box.